Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and we're going to talk about the rookie qualifying round for the Nimehay Cliffs Nine Hole Cup Tournament. I hope I said the name right. I'm not really sure. Uh, but regardless, this was a really nice round, okay? You're going to see a lot of drop shots in this video, which I think is going to be pretty common because the wind angles definitely were very favorable uh, for the qualifying round. So we need to be on top of it. We need to hit these shots get the ball in the hole, and then move on to the finals. So you know the drill. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. It would really mean a lot to me. And if you like the video, please take just a millisecond there and hit that thumbs up button, which is very important. So I had a great round going. Um, I qualified one rookie, and then I decided to back off and forfeit out on my other rookie uh, just so I could possibly play a live stream tomorrow qualifying around this time which a lot of people have been asking for so we'll see if i have time to do it um but you know turn the you know uh, turn your notification bell on so if i do go live and you want to see it you'll get a notification when i do it okay hole number one this is going to be i'll show you a couple different ways that you can play hole number one one is going to be with a navigator and the second one is going to be with a titan so here we're going to be using some top spin combined with one bar of right side spin and you know, we're just stretching our club out to make sure we can get to the green or get down there in that area, which we can. 10% pull at max. You can see here just a tad of overpower, almost half a ball of right curl. We get ourselves a perfect ball and we're going to clip the rough and we're going to roll out onto the fairway, which is just fine, leaving us for a very short distance wedge shot to drop an eagle on the first par four. Um, you know, here is a shot with a Titan, and the reason I'm using a Titan over a Kingmaker is because we are getting a little bit of tailwind. And when we're getting tailwind and we're trying to drive green, we don't want to reduce the wind, which is what a Kingmaker would do, right? It would reduce the wind. We don't need the extra side spin stat from the Kingmaker, so we take out a Titan and we play the same shot with the same OP, the same type of curl. Here I used a little bit more OP because I didn't want to clip the rough and roll out. I wanted to see what happened if I missed the rough. Mission accomplished. Um, <laughs> so we roll past the green, but we stop right here on this side of the fairway, which is completely fine because both shots leave us for easy wedge shots um, to drop the eagle, and it can be played at 0%. Now for me, you know, when it comes to these short distance shots, I don't ever really pull rings. I'm just really familiar with this club here. You can see I use a slight offset to the outside part of the right hand cup. With the end bringer here, as long as I hit perfect, I'm gonna hit this thing dead center, which is exactly what happens. And we are starting off with an eagle on hole number one. Hole number two threw me off a little bit, right? We don't take too many shots on a par three with our short iron. So this is gonna be a thorn shot. Now, I want you to notice what I'm doing here with the spin. Okay, no top no back, half a bar of right side spin. The setup point is the orange ring at the rough line right there, ball guideline short of the hole, but aiming at the hole. The reason why we don't put the ball guideline through the hole um, is because this green rolls fast downhill, which um, you, know, you don't want to experience that because it could leave you for a very long putt. Take a very small ring pull. Now, unfortunately, I hit a great shot to the right, and I still end up missing to the left. But you can see here, we roll down, we catch that little slope, and we come very close to a hole in one. We need to hit the shot perfect, number one. But number two, even if we hit perfect, I'm going to have to assume we would miss even more to the left. So therefore, I want you to add one full bar of side spin to the right instead of half a bar of side spin to the right. Okay. Hole number three, there's two different ways you can play it. Uh, with this being a nine hole cup, I'm gonna take a risk. You can play it right here. So for some of you players that don't have as powerful clubs as me, uh, what we'd wanna do is aim right here with the quarterback and we wanna shoot our ball up as far as we can. Okay, that's shot number one. We want to get as high up on this fairway as possible, obviously without rolling into the rough. Shot number two is gonna be going this way. All right, and the best way to reach the green on shot number two is going to be with a big dog. I haven't tested that shot, but I would imagine it's not the easiest shot to pull off. I believe a lot of players are going to mess this drive up possibly, and they're going to have to end up laying up up here and then try to chip in to save their eagle. 
Uh, I don't want to mess around with any of that if I don't have to. So you can do two things. You can use yourself a berserker like this and take this shot. A lot of people are afraid to take this shot. You don't need to be afraid to take this shot. Here's what you need to do. You need to make sure that your setup point is correct. So notice here, I've got the green inner ring directly in the middle of this fairway, leaving room at the top, bottom, left, and right of the fairway. Now, all we do is pull 10% at max and just hit perfect. I'm using a little bit of right curl. Now you might be saying, well, I don't have a lot of berserkers. Well, I tell you what, this is a golden shot week. And if you follow Tommy's golden shot for the hard edition, it is absolutely the best golden shot that we've had in a long time for a hole in one opportunity. And it's a good time if you spend any money on the game, maybe to spend two or three dollars and get yourself, you know, three to five golden shots and just load up on berserkers. Because again, very rarely do we have such a good opportunity to make a hole in one on the hard edition. I am using a Guardian. So the reason that I'm using a Guardian here is simply because I just want to lay up on the green. This is a difficult shot to hit an Albatross on. So max backspin. You gotta find the right camera angle to pull your rings. This would be a better situation to go ahead and push your rings if you're comfortable with that. But we get ourselves a perfect ball. And like I said, you know, we're just trying to lay up on the green here and put this thing in for an eagle and start ourselves off minus five through the first three holes. Hole number four, I don't have a whole lot for you other than knowing that the, the backspin is pretty good. So like 4.2 bars of backspin. This green can really run from left to right, so you've got to be mindful of that. Orange ring on the rough again. And we pull our rings. And this is another situation to where I hit a great shot. So unfortunately, some great shots on these par threes. This one, in my opinion, is a, is a difficult hole in one anyways. I think the other one, you know, hole number two, you have a lot better chance of picking up the hole in one on. But, you know, hole number four is whatever. We got a lot more drops than that. Okay, hole number five. Now, I want you to keep in mind that as we move on to the finals, if we get some type of tailwind with crosswind, we will gamble and go for free, uh, go for green. But it's not worth the risk here because on this one, we're able to use like 1.3 bars of backspin, full side spin to the left. I move my target here to the middle of the fairway, so I have it looking just like that. And then, you know, I have to push my rings again. This is kind of a common theme in this wind angle in this tournament, these wind angles, with all these trees and stuff and cliffs in our way. Uh, we have to push our rings more than we like to. So that's a, that's a technique you need to get comfortable with using because it's going to help you out in situations like this. We pop this onto the fairway and then we get a very favorable win for shot number two. In my opinion, when we're trying to make these extra drops, direct tailwind is best case scenario. Second base scenario is direct headwind, which is what we're getting here. So I'm using my backspin with my thorn, okay? You've got to make sure when you use backspin with the thorn that you are putting that bounce into the hole. You cannot leave it short because the ball guideline will play true and you will come up just short of the hole. Make our ring pull, perfect ball, and that thing goes in dead center for another eagle on another par four. It's going to be hole number six. I'm going to show you two ways to play hole number six. First one's with a Titan, and we're going to use a Titan for the same reason that we played a Titan on hole number one. We do not want to reduce the wind, and we do not need the extra side spin. So on the Titan shot, 10%, and then I'm going with quite a bit of overpower. So you can see there, this was almost max OP. I have nice room there on the fairway, and we do go from fairway to fairway. This is ultimately going to leave us for a uh, thorn shot for an albatross, which I do pick up. 420 yards. I decided to hop over to my other account and just see what would happen if I would play with the Berserker. So we play it with the Berserker. The only thing that I don't like about the Berserker shot here is I cannot use overpower. Um, I can't use overpower, but I do just wonder... And, I, and now I'm literally picking this up as I, as I do this. I wonder if we were to move our target over here. 
That seems to give us a little bit more room for overpower up here. Uh, that might be an opportunity. I don't know. You can test it if you want. But here, I don't have room to go into overpower because if I go with max overpower like I did on my other account, I would just miss the entire fairway and probably just put this thing right into the water. So as you can see, I'm barely using any OP. Perfect ball. And that's, that's a razor thin margin, okay? But again, I wonder if we go more right, if we have more room to work with with OP and see if we can get ourselves closer to the green. Hey, but regardless, you know, I'm going to say it just like this. We don't have to worry about that. Don't use the berserker on that shot because it only got us five extra yards. And both shots are going to be played with a thorn at minimum distance. Now, notice here, I am at an absolute minimum distance. So we need to move our target up like this and then use our backspin so that we can pull our rings accurately. If we played it at absolute minimum distance because of the tailwind, we would not be able to pull our thorn back and use our rings. We would get caught between clubs. But this is gonna be the same thing. Notice here, I'm going heavy with the backspin. You have to make sure that your ball is bouncing into the cup. Perfect ball, and I almost didn't leave it bouncing into the cup enough because you can see there it almost sat right before the cup and stalled on me, but I did pick up the albatross on hole number six. Hole number seven gave me high anxiety because this is a very easy hole to get to the green on. All we need is a katana. Heck, you don't even have to use a katana. You could ultimately use you know a navigator or maybe even a marlin if you wanted to. So I got my shot, all, my, shot, my shot all set up, and then here we go, trying to reconnect you, trying to reconnect you. This went on for a while, and I really thought I was going to miss my turn, trying to reconnect. The game ended up refreshing on me and making me reset. I didn't have a lot of time, so I just set up the shot. Perfect ball. And, you know, this is a really nice shot. It always is. Sometimes it's just about getting the overpower right, but you can see here, we roll onto the green, leaving us for a very short putt for an, another eagle on a par four. So like I said, I had a great round going, and I'm going to try to live stream my other one tomorrow. Okay, hole number eight we have to talk about for a second. Hole number eight, I'm playing 30% at mid, two and a half mile per hour wind. When you go to pull your rings, these trees on the left-hand side are probably going to get in your way. I had to push my rings. I'm trying to push them 2.9 rings. 4.1 back, I'm sorry, 4 back, no side. Okay, so notice, 2.5 mile per hour wind, I am pushing to the left. Well, I mean, technically the way you're looking at it, it's, it's going to be straight up north. But when we flip the camera around and take the shot, we're pushing our rings to the left at 30%. Now we do pick up the hole in one, but the hole in one comes to the right hand side of the cup. And the reason I think that's important is because I only had two and a half mile per hour wind, which is on the lower scale for a rookie. If you were to get like a four mile per hour wind and play 30% at mid, I do fear you're going to miss to the right. So in a higher wind situation, I would actually add 10% elevation to the shot. Either way, that's a really good baseline. We do pick up a hole in one and we can learn and adjust from there. And that's going to bring us on to hole number nine. Hole number nine, I thought about trying to have some fun. I do think we could take a Kingmaker or a Titan and try to do exactly what you're seeing right here. Try to go over that little gap, uh, that little water area. And then I would try to get my ball to sit right here, like before that bunker. And then boom, go for... A thorn shot for an albatross. I do think it's possible, but I didn't want to ruin my good round um, by trying to go for that shot. So that might be something I try to do tomorrow just for the heck of it. So here, you know, I end up laying up. I still pulled it 10% at max. Perfect ball. This seems to come in and sit on the fairway nicely. You know, shot number two, I, I didn't like any setup. I didn't like this shot. That's ultimately what I settle on. I thought about going for a rough bump, and I'm like, no, that's just, it's not a good stable rough there. So then I thought about playing to the right-hand side, but I just settle right here, okay? 
4.2 back, max right side spin. At this point of the video, I just want everybody to become a subscriber if you're not one. It would mean a lot to me. Take just a second, please, and hit the thumbs up. That does go a long way for us folks who make these videos. And I hope this helped, and then I will see you in the finals.